6th, 1944, and the greatest armada in military history is assembled in England for an assault on Hitler's fortress Europe. For this long-awaited D-Day, the Allies have assembled 12,000 planes to protect a surface force of 4,000 ships, all under the supreme command of General Dwight D. Eisenhower, who has British General Montgomery at his side. The Allied forces have nearly 3 million troops trained for the assault, and British and U.S. planes bomb the French coast around the clock, dropping 9,000 tons of explosives during a few hours before the landing. Awesome force of a thousand planes and gliders thrusts deep into France to drop men of the U.S. 101st and 82nd Airborne and the British 6th. Their might darkens the skies over Normandy. The Allies have complete control of the air and cover the surface forces as Allied troops pile into landing craft to hit the coast from Cherbourg to Le Havre. As they prepare to move in, 500 warships lay down a withering barrage. Troops move in aboard LCTs and LSTs, and it's the beginning of the end for Hitler's dreams of world conquest. German resistance proves less than was feared, and wave after wave hits the beach. Casualties were heavy in those early hours, but the Allies were on their way to Berlin. The stupendous attack on the fortified coast split the German high command. General Rommel wanted to move his forces to the beaches. Von Rundstedt wanted to wait until the Allies moved inland. When they finally decided on action, it was too late. The beachhead had been firmly established. Less than a year later, General Eisenhower had Germany's unconditional surrender. D-Day will stand in history as one of the greatest military feats of all time. The determination of free men to triumph over tyranny rose to new heights on the beaches of Normandy.